The AP Physics 1 exam is in a few days' time, so now is the time to take a look at the formula sheet for the standard exam. While you'll have access to much information, I do recommend having this formula sheet right by your side, and I will link this exact one um, marked up and color-coded uh, below. First, I am just showing you the formula sheet. So in physical form, it is a single piece of paper, front and back. On the front, you have things like constants and prefixes. And on the back, you have all the equations that you need for each type of unit. We're going to divide all of these into subunits so that you can see them clearly. And we're also going to go ahead right now and X out this box and the box below. Those units will not be covered on this particular exam, and we can therefore not think about them for right now. First, we're gonna take a look at the constants and conversion factors. These first three here are the mass of the proton, neutron, and electron. Sometimes when you get uh, problems that are asking you about um, speeds of objects and things like that, sometimes they'll ask you about electrons rather than cars, for example. In the cases of using particles, they expect you to be able to just find the mass. The speed of light is the most important quantity and constant in the universe, and we're going to use the approximation 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. These next two, for this particular exam, we're going to go ahead and not think about because they are part of the electricity and magnetism unit that is no longer being tested this year. The next two are extremely important and you should recognize them right away, capital G versus lowercase g, your universal gravitational constant, and the acceleration due to gravity at Earth's surface, in the vertical or y direction, acceleration a becomes lowercase g. Things fall at a constant acceleration. Next, let's look at the unit symbols. These are the units, not variables, that we'll come across. Units are descriptors that come on the end of numbers. We use international units so that our formulas will work. You must always convert to international uh, units before moving forward in a problem. The ones that we are highly likely to come across, I am highlighting in green. In fact, these first three, this is the kilogram meter second system. We will not see ampere. We will not see Kelvin. We'll definitely see Hertz. That's the SI unit of frequency. We'll definitely see Newton, the SI unit of force. Joule, the SI unit of energy watt, the SI unit of power. All the rest are part of units that we are not covering or are just um, temperatures. The units in green, you should take a moment to make sure that you know which variable they belong to and which unit or units we tend to see them in. Here they are. Next, you have a table that reminds you of all the possible common prefixes. The prefixes belong to units. They come before units sometimes. Let's take a look at an example. Terra, represented by the capital letter T. What's a terameter? This table is telling you that it's 1 times 10 to the 12th meters. That's what that T actually represents and we replace it with that. Let's take a look at another one.
For this next one, I'll use one that's more common. So let's use centi. That comes up all the time. So what about a centisecond? Well, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. That's what this table is saying. Uh, you replace the lowercase c with that 10 to the negative 2. What if it was 4 centiseconds? Well, it's the number 4. Then what centi represents, 10 to the negative 2, and then the seconds. Just like that. Let's note that one of our major SI units is the kilogram. It already has a symbol on it. That K represents kilo. Find it in the table. What does it represent? Literally 10 to the 3 or 1,000 grams. 1,000 is what 10 to the 3 represents. It's 1 times 10 to the 3. You move the decimal point three places to the right. Finally, we're going to note that we usually don't see a lot of the larger prefixes, and so I'm just going to highlight the ones that are most common that you're probably going to see on the exam. You probably, with a little star next to it, won't see anything besides these four. If you see another one, it might be nano, maybe. So let's put that in, uh, we'll put that in orange as a maybe. But usually you do not see tera, giga, or mega. But if you do, don't panic because you have a full prefix table that will let you figure out what to do. Why would you need the values of the trigonometric functions for common angles? So let's just do a review. So this angle at zero degrees, sine at the angles the y-coordinate or zero. Cosine is the x-coordinate, or 1, and tangent is y over x, which is 0 over 1, which is 0. So sine is your y-coordinate, cosine is your x, and tangent is your y over x. For an exam like this, why would you need some angles? Well, what if you were looking for the y component of a force and the angle was at 37 degrees? If you got that question, you would go, what? Sine of 37? How am I supposed to do that? They said that we wouldn't need a calculator. Well, they'll give you 37 degrees. Look at where they intersect, at 3 fifths. That's what it is. The final thing on this page is conventions that are used in this exam. At this level, the frame of reference of any problem is assumed to be inertial unless otherwise stated. We assume air resistance is negligible unless otherwise stated. And in all situations, positive work is defined as work done on a system. We actually won't need the final two points for this exam, because they both are about units that are in, um, those are about current and electricity and magnetism. So we won't need to worry or think about these. We'll only need to think a little bit about the first three. Here are all of the units in physics this year. Kinematics, dynamics, circular motion and gravitation, energy, momentum, simple harmonic motion, and torque and rotational motion. The rest are gone. I've color coordinated them and matched them to the formulas on the formula sheet. So for example, all of the pink highlighted equations are all kinematic equations, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at some of these in particular. So the first three here are literally the kinematic equations. You can also use them for the y direction. Uh, you would just do a little su uh, subscript of y instead. Your force equations in red, for some reason they put your weight down here. So this is just a rearranged equation of f sub g equals mg, which is also weight. And it's way down here, so note that it's separated a little bit. That's your F equals MA, it's just rearranged, and that's your force due to friction, is mu Fn. In orange, 
This is going to be circular motion and gravitational motion. Here's your two momentum equations in blue. And don't forget that this one is also equal to J, which is impulse. In green is our energy equations, including power. For some reason, they also separated out your potential energy. So there's kinetic energy and there's potential energy. In my own class, we saw it often as PE equals MGH. So H height is what that delta Y is. So you may recognize that more, but you should note that your total mechanical energy is going to be kinetic plus potential, which is down here. In dark purple, here's force due to a spring, potential energy due to a spring. This is Hooke's law and potential energy. Also in this unit is the period of a spring and the period of a pendulum. So that's going to be T sub S and T sub P. For your circular motion, you replace your acceleration with centripetal acceleration. There's more in this unit, so we also have the period is 2 pi over the angular velocity or 1 over the frequency. This will probably come up less often, but it might if you need angular velocity and they give you the period. Come here because you can find it. Here we have our really important Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation that relates the force between two bodies and the potential energy. Note that the potential energy uh, just removes the squared on the uh, radial separation there. And so that unit is spread out a little and you should note it. In light purple is your rotational motion. All of these really are kind of analogs and so you should note that theta is position, which is represented by x or, or d sometimes. Omega, that's angular velocity. Alpha is the angular version of acceleration. Let's find some more. Time equals time. That's really important that that's a straight out equals. Uh, time is uh, universal through both rotational frames and linear frames. Tau, this symbol, that's torque. That's the angular version of force. I, moment of inertia, an rotational version of mass and L, angular momentum, angular version of momentum. So all of these formulas in light purple in your rotational unit, they all kind of are mapping back to the linear world and just using new symbols that you probably aren't as used to using. The final thing to note here is that moment of inertia. You won't have a table on you, but they might ask you or they might give you, for example, they might say in the problem, the moment of inertia is mr cubed or something like that. In which case you would just put mr cubed in instead of i. The moment of inertia is based on the shape. We're going to take a look at your list of variables now. So we have here a list of each variable and what it represents. 
A really good exercise would be to go down this list and write down what the unit for each one of these is. So ideally, you should understand each of these letters when you look at them and know what they are. However, if you forget, if a problem asks you for uh, torque, for example, you can look at this list and find the word torque, see that it's represented by the Greek letter tau, and go, oh yeah, and then move over and look for the equations that contain the Greek letter tau. The final part of this sheet is just a very, very quick reminder of some basic geometry and trigonometry. They give you formulas for very basic shapes, uh, rectangles, triangles, circles, rectangular solids, cylinders, spheres. They may or may not come up. This is just in case if you forget, you know, the area of a circle is pi r squared. It's right there for you. And then this last section, your right triangle. You've got your Pythagorean theorem, and then you have your So Katoa. It looks a little bit different than you might have seen before, just because the letters being represented on this triangle are A, B, and C, but like that's your opposite side, right? Your uh, theta will shine its flashlight on the side opposite it. So A is actually your opposite. C being across from the right angle is, of course, representing your hypotenuse, and that makes B your adjacent. It's literally touching or adjacent to the theta. So if you feel better seeing it as so ka toa, there it is for you instead. I will finally remind you that when you are looking for horizontal components, you are, in many cases, looking for your uh, cosine to be used. And in the y direction, the vertical direction, when you are looking for your y components, you are very often looking for using sine. Not always, but it is a good general rule of thumb if you lose your mind. The y component is usually in the first quadrant uh, associated with sine and x component with cosine. Here's the full thing again. It's all color coordinated and filled out now, and I will have a link to it below. I recommend you have it by your side. I recommend you look it over. Uh, do things like maybe uh, write down yourself what each um, unit, you know, um, maybe for the unit you could say, uh, what kind of variables do we usually use these units for, you know, um, like meters. You usually use that for length. You usually use that for position things like that. You can also note that there are some small equations that they just do not give you and expect you to know. In kinematics, that's your average velocity is a change in displacement over a change in time. In the scalar version, uh, being speed is change in distance over change in time. And then like down here in the rotational motion unit, they don't give you uh, the relationship between angular and linear you have to know these, so I'll write them down for you, and uh, now they're there. Look a little bit into your notes and see if there are any other formulas you can find that just aren't here, so you know where they are. And of course, good luck.